going on everybody i hope everyone is doing well we have got three very different what i like to say balance bowls so we've got a black bean kimchi and plantain bowl who would have thought plantain and kimchi it seriously works so well together the balance of the sweet and the spicy oh my goodness literally a match made in heaven we've also got a new potato and walnut gremolata bowl this is my ideal type of lunch bowl just kind of grab everything that i have throw it together and just make it delicious make it work so the other bowl that i'm going to be sharing is a curry tahini yogurt and chickpea bowl i guarantee that you are going to adore this one so that brings me to shout out this week's sponsor which is skillshare i absolutely adore this online learning community which offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. There are so many beneficial classes that I really feel could offer some type of ease with everything that's going on collectively. I'm talking classes from drawing to writing to journaling. So the class that really stood out for me this week is called iPhone Filmmaking Create Cinematic Video with Your Phone by Caleb Babcock and Niles Gray. I always feel like I need to bring out my proper camera, but that's not the case. This class broke everything down. It was kind of like a beginner's guide of how to use your iPhone to actually make really really fantastic quality cinematic quality type of videos so Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first 1,000 people who click the link in my description box if there's something that you're curious about something that you want to get creative with then take this opportunity after the trial membership is around $10 a month Tag me over if you make any of these bowls on my Instagram at Tish Wonders. Give the video a like, support my channel, subscribe. Let's jump straight into the kitchen. Let's go and whip up these bowls. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We are jumping right into the juicy stuff. We have got this black bean kimchi and plantain bowl. So I made it once and then I made it again and I haven't stopped making it since. It is irresistible. Everything merges so well together. We've got fried plantain, black beans, avocado, kimchi, fried egg, all of my favorites, oh my goodness. We're gonna need some black beans and then we're gonna kind of season them up with loads of different spices. We're gonna use fresh coriander, onions, garlic. I use a habanero pepper. So this kimchi is shop bought, obviously, if you make your own kimchi kimchi or sauerkraut or pickle your own vegetables then that is perfect we're going to be needing some eggs obviously omit the eggs if you are vegan that's fine it's still going to be delicious so we're going to need a plantain and an avocado so to prepare these smoky black beans we are going to begin by chopping up an onion so we're just going to finely dice our onion and then we're going to finely chop up some garlic so i chose to use a habanero pepper you could use whatever chili uh, pepper you have on hand if you have chili flakes that will work well too so heat a heavy base pan and swell in a little bit of oil i used some olive oil and i placed in the onions the garlic and the habanero just mixing everything well so I crushed up some cumin seeds and some coriander seeds. You could use the powder form. Uh, I just have the spices, so that's what I use. So in went the spices. Placed in a little bit of sea salt, some black pepper, and a touch of dry thyme, and then I continued to mix. So I placed in the cooked black beans, seasoned a little bit more with salt, because I can just tell visually when something needs more salt or pepper. Placed some stock in. Now you can use water if you don't have any stock, uh, but obviously stock is just gonna add a little bit more flavor. So yeah, if you've got stock, then great. To give the beans that smoky flavor, I placed in some smoked paprika, and I placed in a bay leaf. This is just gonna add to the aroma of these beans, just make them even more flavorsome and delicious. So I reduced the heat, covered the pot, and I cooked everything down, just stirring occasionally for around 15 minutes or so. I chopped up some fresh coriander. This step is just everything. If you love coriander, it's everything. And I threw the coriander in, squeezed in some fresh lime juice, and then just set the beans aside. So cooking up some golden plantain couldn't be easier. All you need is a plantain <laughs> and you need a knife to chop it up. So yeah, I went ahead, chopped my plantain up. You can do this any way you feel to. And I heated some coconut oil in a pan, placing the plantain in and cooking on both sides. I like to place over a little bit of sea salt and yeah, just cooked on both sides until it was looking something like this. Oh my goodness, just yeah, no words when it comes to plantain, no words. So serving up this black bean bowl, I placed on top those steaming hot black beans, which are just cooked to perfection, uh, followed on by the plantain, the kimchi, some sliced avocado, and a crispy fried
fried egg. I placed over something called furikake. It's like a sesame seed blend and I love it on top of fried egg. It's just delicious. Um, I also placed on top some sprouts and some chopped spring onions, which are back in season, which I'm so happy about. I mean, those black beans just by themselves, mind blowing, absolutely incredible. So the second bowl is a new potato and asparagus bowl. We are in spring, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate with this gorgeous produce, new potatoes, asparagus. Some of the ingredients that I used to put together this bowl include radish. We're gonna be using some asparagus, some olives, love to have olives on hand at all times, new potatoes, some lemon, the zest and the juice we're gonna be using and some parsley. Okay, so this new potato and gremolata salad, I had the idea to fuse the two together and it was such a treat, it works so well. So to start, we're gonna make the gremolata, which is our, our dressing for the potato salad. So I roasted up some walnuts in an oven just until they were kind of toasty brown and golden and then I chopped them up. I continued by chopping up some fresh parsley, adding both to a large mixing bowl. I placed in some sea salt, some lemon rind. If you're using lemon rind, make sure you are using an unwaxed lemon. I also used some zesty lemon juice, placing a lot of lemon juice in. I swelled in that extra virgin olive oil and placed in some minced garlic and then threw in some chopped spring onions, which isn't a classic step for gremolata, but I just wanted to add some spring onions because potatoes and spring onions go so well together. So that's what I did. So I then prepared the new potatoes, just chopping the slightly bigger ones up into like three so they all cook at the same time. I brought some salted water to boil, placed in the new potatoes and cooked them until they were soft, but not falling apart. You know, you kind of want them to still have a firmness to them. So I then rinsed them, splashing over some cold water so they wouldn't continue to cook placed them back into the bowl and threw all of that gremolata dressing on top. Oh my goodness, mixed it well, had a taste, added some more black pepper because I needed some. <laughs> and yeah, at this stage, you have a taste, give it some more seasoning if it needs it. So simple asparagus, I just placed the asparagus on a flat baking tray, placed over some sea salt, a drizzle of olive oil, placed them into an oven until they were cooked. So a few added extras that I added to this bowl included some leftover salmon, which I just kind of mixed up and I put some eggs to boil so let's put this bowl together I started off with some lettuce followed on by that gremolata and new potato salad I placed on top some asparagus some olives that salmon my soft boiled egg and then just swelled over a bit of the dressing from the potato salad because you can never have too much dressing all of my favorites again I said that already didn't I but I can say it again all of my favorites all on one bowl I like a lot of food so I'm allowed to say that as many times as I want. So that potato salad, which started off as a little experiment of me just mixing gremolata and new potatoes, is definitely gonna be a staple throughout spring and summer. It was delicious. So the final idea that I'm gonna share with you is this curry tahini yogurt and chickpea bowl. Now I have loved curry tahini for the longest, but adding yogurt to it just took it to a whole nother level. We're gonna crisp up some chickpeas, we're gonna roast some asparagus and cauliflower, and we're gonna put everything together. And it's gonna be this intense, flavor-packed, yummy, warm spring salad. So for this irresistible curry tahini, which you can just make up like a whole pot and just store it in your fridge and swirl it on anything, you're gonna need some yogurt. I chose to use some coconut yogurt. Tahini some juicy limes, some garlic, and then the spices that we're gonna be using include cumin, you could use seeds or powder, it's up to you, some garam masala and some curry powder. So you definitely don't have to use a blender. I actually don't know why I just gave myself more washing up to do, but yeah, into my blender, I placed in the coconut yogurt, followed on by the tahini, the spices, some minced garlic, some sea salt, some black pepper, some lime juice, and then some water just to kind of thin everything out and make sure everything gets blitzed. I blitzed everything until smooth, until it was about this type of consistency. And then it was time to roast up the cauliflower and the asparagus, which I kept super simple because the dressing has so much fire and zest to it that we can go simple with the vegetables and simple vegetables are delicious. I simply place them on a flat baking tray, both the cauliflower and the asparagus, placing over some sea salt, black pepper, swirl of olive oil, placed both trays because they didn't fit on one into the oven and cooked until they were kind of golden, roasty, toasty you know my favorite words, until they were looking something like this. So for our spiced chickpeas, we are going to take our cooked chickpeas, place them into a bowl, followed on by some garlic granules. I placed over some nigella seeds, just my absolute favorite seed of all time, probably one of them anyways. Some cumin seeds, some curry powder, some sea salt, black pepper, swirl of olive oil, and a little bit of dried thyme. 
I just mixed everything well and I heated up a pan because I'm gonna do them on the hob. You can place them into the oven if you'd prefer to. So I simply cooked my chickpeas in the pan until they were looking something like this. Um, you probably need to cook them for around seven to 10 minutes for them to kind of get this crispy effect. Some added extras for this warm salad include spring onions and coriander. The combination of all of these ingredients are gonna to fuse together so magically. Yeah, just a few simple steps and we have this great spring salad. So you can serve it up any way you want. If you wanna do it family style and kind of like a big bowl for everyone to share, then place on your roasted vegetables, followed on by those crispy chickpeas, a good swell of that tahini. And I love to scatter over a lot of nigella seeds just to finish it off. You can serve it how I served it, solo style. You can place on your salad with all of the dressing and everything. Um, I soft boiled an egg and I had a good slice of sourdough, which, oh my goodness, everything together was just a dream. This one is Mm, this one's heaven sent, seriously. Give it a try, give them all a try. Let me know how it goes in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel because I will be here next week sharing more incredible recipes, ideas with you guys. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Take care everyone, bye.